Okay, so um, here is the background about uh, 853, very high level again. Um, 853 is um, developed by several uh, federal agencies. Um, it's all uh, tax funded, uh, you know, development um, that's been uh, in the works since 2005, I think, since ever since NEST. <clears throat> Us in place. So, uh, and uh, the 853 um, requirement, the security controls, um, the current one is revision four. That's what uh, most of the folks in the industry use. And then that's going to be officially withdrawn um, on September 23rd of 21. The reason is um, that's being superseded by uh, revision five, which is uh, uh, released. Uh, like a couple of uh, months ago um, and uh, that that has like really some interesting uh, changes to it um, uh, we still need to do a deep dive into revision five changes but what we see um, at a high level is uh, they've kind of integrated a lot of uh, privacy controls into the security aspect of it and uh, also they've kind of withdrawn some of uh, the controls that are no no longer relevant um, so that that looks really interesting, and uh, um, it would be very interested to uh, hear from you if you are working on revision five. And also, uh, 853 is considered as kind of mother of all guidelines. Um, the reason being, it has got like pretty much all the different areas that you would uh, look at if you are a security professional. Um, all the different areas, starting from access control all the way to uh, backup and disaster recovery. So they've got that covered um, uh, in their 853 revision 4 or even in revision 5. The thing is, depending on how we want to implement it, what is applicable for you, um, they've created a very, very flexible guideline that would help you to implement it successfully, right? And then uh, this is used by pretty much all federal government agencies. The interesting thing about this one is, although it is uh, kind of kept um, a voluntary uh, guideline uh, requirement for a lot of the agencies and a uh, lot of other mandatory requirements like FIPS 200 and other things uh, relies on 853. So um, it's kind of a very, very critical uh, backbone for the uh, security uh, control requirements within the federal agencies. And a lot of the other um, requirements, including 800-171 and other um, guidelines are off of this 853. So a um, lot of the federal subcontractors, including the universities, manufacturers, uh, everyone need to comply with the 853 if they are managing any of the federal information. And uh, what we see in the industry um, is a lot of the vendors who are uh, supporting the federal agencies or the subcontractors of the subcontractors of the subcontractors. So they all need to comply with this. They one, a um, lot of their customers are making it kind of a mandatory. And second, there is a lot of maturity in the uh, guideline requirements that's been, or, um, you know, uh, that has come out in revision four, and a lot of people have started adopting it, and they're seeing the benefit of it. Right. And then also what we've uh, seen in our experience, it's very, very actionable information. Um, you know, if we are going to adopt this 853 standard and also it is a technology agnostic. Uh, what really I mean by that is um, whether you're uh, running your system on Azure Cloud or AWS or, you know, you're uh, hosted, uh, you're in a hosted environment. Uh, no matter where you are trying to apply this, and it, uh, this should this is uh, pretty much flexible, um, you know that you can adapt to your environment and use it. So, um, <clears throat> so there are um, low, moderate, and high impact. I think like I'll, I have a separate section there where I cover about what are the different families and controls um, that are out there. Again, uh, conti continuing on that uh, background uh, thing. So this is a set of standards, methodologies, and procedures, right? That align, uh, that should essentially align with your policy, your mission, vision of your business, um, and then your technology approaches, uh, whatever you are taking. So that's, that's essentially the way it is developed. And then also it kind of provides you priority in terms of what kind of uh, control that needs to be prioritized in terms of adoption. Uh, and also it has got like several flexibility factors built on top of that with respect to assurance, um, whether it's a low impact, medium impact or uh, um, high impact. 
so you could use that and then again it is performance based and uh, also it's uh, it is free essentially right so you could go ahead and uh, use them for your critical infrastructure or uh, any kind of information uh, security program that you're implementing and then uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, sec a lot of industry um, and agencies are collaborating with NIST to develop the standard. So everything is uh, built in uh, as part of uh, the overall guidelines. So what essentially it means is you could use the same standard um, for a manufacturing, for a technology company, or for a supply chain and whatnot, right? Um, so it's, it's uh, very, um, very flexible. And then uh, this is a uh, voluntary international standard and it's it's available pretty much for everybody, right? So um, just a quick overview about this one, right? So what, what, what are we talking about 853? It is just a catalog of all the security controls. Um, uh, both from functionality perspective and also from assurance perspective. When we say functionality, it is essentially the built-in um, function that you are supposed to have as part of your security process, uh, right? That's what the functionality means. And then um, uh, assurance, meaning it's a capability of what you could do. Like say, for example, if, if you can, let's talk about access control. Do you have the capability to audit all the administration activities that are going on? In your environment so that is the capability part of it right so the functionality part of it is essentially are you have do you have these kind of specific controls in place um, to track these things so that that's from the category side of it uh, sorry the uh, functionality side of things so um, it provides you these uh, differentiation and also it provides you the catalog so you can essentially pick and choose it's like the catalog that you get uh, in your mail and uh, you you basically look at all your um, all the list of things that are listed in there in the catalog and then you pick and choose based on what do you need, right? Essentially, that's the way it is approached. And then also, they provide you even a process and approach to tailor those controls uh, according to your environment and according to your mission, vision of the business and stuff. So that is, that's pretty good thing. And uh, what are some of the things that you need to adopt? And then even they provide you some kind of a high level process uh, approach for how to tailor those baselines into your environment. Right. And also uh, what it is not, uh, uh, what 853 is not meant for is uh, it doesn't provide you the guidance on the application of security controls. Uh, what uh, essentially it means is like, how do you need to essentially implement it on a specific technology or a specific thing? It doesn't provide you that. So it provides you the details of it high level, and then like you are supposed to be translating that into your environment and then implementing it. For more information, click on the link below or visit databrackets.com.